My name is Claire Murray and I'm Communications and Fundraising Director here at Sheffield Theatres. And this afternoon I want to talk to you a little bit about some of our audience development work and the way that we're using demand-led pricing. So a bit of Sheffield Theatres propaganda to start us off with. Sheffield Theatres is the largest producing theatre complex outside of London. Um, we've got around 400,000 people coming through our doors every year. That's uh, about seven to 10,000 people a week. And um, as you might know, the 1,100 seat Lyceum Auditorium tends to play host to the big shows touring the UK. Uh, whereas in the Crucible and the studio, our own work that we make ourselves finds its home. One of our challenges in common with, I think, most of the organisations here and many organisations across the UK is diversifying our audience in every respect. This is really broad. But our audience looks a little bit like this. They're all over 50, they're generally well educated and they've got really good levels of disposable income. And they are, of course, very important to us. Um, they're important to our future sustainability. But it's also important that we think about young people and, um, and diversifying our audience. In the future, we'd love our audience to look a little bit more like this. Um, because um, with fewer people engaging with arts and culture, we need to think about how we can make a difference to their early experiences and begin a relationship that we hope will last forever. So we have two specific pricing initiatives um, that are designed to um, help us to reach younger people. The first is um, quite new, it's called Ignite, and it was launched in November last year. Um, it's aimed at reaching young people who are studying performing arts uh, in Sheffield, at school or in college. And um, the reason that we've introduced this scheme is because um, some of you may know in this country, cultural education is being squeezed more and more. And um, these young people have elected to, um, to study performing arts and we want to stand with them and support them in that, um, in that pursuit. And so we're offering them free tickets because we want them to have a live experience in an auditorium that is quite remarkable. Um, and um, we don't want them to feel that they can't afford it and that they have to resort to um, experiencing theatre via broadcast or via streaming, which we think is quite a different experience. So, as I said, just launched in November, um, but really well received by both the media and the people who, um, for whom it's going to make a real difference. The second scheme that we have is called Life for Five, and it's um, a little more long-standing. Um, we've been running this since uh, 2011, and it's aimed at anyone aged 16 to 26, and we offer five pound tickets to those people to come and see any of the shows across all of our spaces. So um, this scheme has developed a lot over the years, and I thought it might be useful to just share a little bit about what we've learned um, in implementing Life for Five. So um, first of all, the scheme is very much driven now by um, highly visual content um, and dynamic content, and it's mostly happening on um, social media platforms. We have a, a group of young ambassadors who um, help us to get the word out to um, their peers. Um, but I think what the most important thing that we've learned over the last couple of years is that it's really important for our um, staff team to be engaged with Life of Five. Um, and um, that's because the young audiences that are coming through our building have different expectations and behave in a slightly different way to our traditional audiences. So for example, it's really important that our front of house team understand um, why we're working to develop young audiences because they behave differently with technology um, to the traditional audience that we have through the building and we need to be able to respond to that. Um, but also from a programming perspective, um, it's been um, essential that we've communicated our commitment to developing younger audiences to our producers because um, they are obviously extremely keen to make sure that they can maximise their income when they're, when they're coming to our building. Um, and so they don't really want to offer big discounts um, to young people. But it's our stated aim 
that we want to do this. And so if you're bringing a show to Sheffield Theatres, then um, you have to offer a proportion of your seats um, to young people, uh, to Life of Five scheme. Um, the final thing that we've learned is that it's really important to make sure that the booking process, the message, um, is really simple and, and signing up to Life of Five has to be really simple. Um, we've changed our box office system in the last two years and we've also changed our website. Once upon a time you used to have to um, sign up for Life of Five um, on paper, shock horror, and um, now you can do it online and you can book your tickets um, online. You don't have to come to the box office to do it and that's completely changed the experience for those young people. Um, this production of Everybody's Talking About Jamie, we had 320 Life of Five tickets across the run, um, which was a good result for us, and um, the majority of those were obviously booked online. Um, countless young people, I should say, who also came to see that show who didn't book through Life of Five because the buzz around it was so enormous. So um, our challenge is how do we offer these schemes that we're really passionate about and I hope you can tell that we're really committed to developing younger audiences but we don't have um, specific sponsorship or designated funding um, in order to run um, Ignite or Life for Five and it's something that um, I puzzle over a lot. And one of the ways that it's possible is through us taking a very bold approach to um, demand-led and dynamic pricing. So last year we started working with an American-based company called TRG, um, who helped us to look at sales and income levels across the organisation. We started off by looking at the produced work in the Crucible and uh, our pantomime, which we produce in the Lyceum. The Crucible is a thrust stage, as you can see, and uh, it's traditionally a one price house, so it looks like it used to look like this. Um, the difference was that you would pay a different amount if you were coming on a Monday night to, let's say, a weekend, what we would consider to be a premium evening. You might pay £23 um, on a Monday, £28 on a Saturday, and you'd pay the same price regardless of where you sat, whether you're right at the front in the centre here. Uh, or up at the, um, at the back at the side there. Um, what we realised through working with TRG is that we had an opportunity to reimagine pricing in a way that would help us to um, both generate more income and widen access to the work. Um, so we launched a new pricing structure in November last year uh, and we now have a three price house for drama and a four price house for musicals. <coughs> So let me just talk you through this a, a, a little. Um, the uh, seats that you can see at the side in the paler yellow colour, they are the lowest priced seats. They are £15. Um, that price is um, lower than anything we've ever been able to offer before on our produced work. And um, what we hope is that it opens up the opportunity to come to the Crucible for people who would never have been able to afford it before. It is balanced by an increase in the, um, in the central section, so the red seats that you can see. Um, for a drama performance, they are now £29, and for a musical, the purple seats that you can see there, they are £40. That is higher than we've um, charged previously. However, the reason that we've priced them in that way is because these are the seats that are most in demand from our audiences. And when we went on sale in November, we saw no price resistance. In fact, these are the seats that sold first. The high price seats are the ones that have gone first. And they are obviously enabling us to offer 10,000 15 pound seats across the 2017 season, which we think is really worthwhile. Um, in terms of the Lyceum, so pantomime, for anyone who doesn't know, does tend to be um, the world in which um, our family audiences live at Christmas time. And um, that was um, a three price house with the most expensive seats in the stalls and um, the cheaper seats up in the balcony. And that's, that's pretty standard in the UK. Um, we've completely transformed that and we now offer uh, our lowest price seats in the stalls and there are some there in the circle, they are still the ones in the pale yellow. 
uh, and they are also £15. Again, you wouldn't have been able to come to the pantomime for as, as little as that previously. Um, and also, they offer a completely different experience to those people. So, if you um, couldn't afford to pay the higher prices previously, you would have been sitting in the balcony and um, you are further away from the action. Um, obviously, the stall seats uh, tend to be the more in-demand seats. Um, they offer, um, some might argue, a better experience. And for young people who are very often having their um, first visit to the theatre, we think that this is an amazing opportunity and they are obviously being snapped up as we speak. Um, so this is proving to be a really robust way for us to use pricing to support audience development, to encourage customers to book early and to generate increased revenue. And the early signs are, are looking great. We've already had um, 2,000 sign-ups to um, our Ignite scheme. Um, Life of Five tickets are growing um, and we've gone from um, 1,400 seats um, for Life of Five in 2014 to over 6,000 in 2016 and this year I think we'll top that again. Um, our average ticket yield on the 2017 season um, that we've repriced has gone up by between £5 and £7 per ticket. And um, our early experiments with dynamic pricing, which we're also running alongside this new pricing structure. So where we see that a performance is particularly successful and there is demand for seats, we will increase the prices, but never on the £15 seats. Um, we've generated an additional £10,000 in the, um, the first part of this year. That's £10,000 that we're ploughing back into um, audience development. And um, you know, we believe that we will be able to really widen our reach with these initiatives, and we think that's an investment that's really worth making. Thank you very much for listening. I'm happy to take questions at the end.